you know VP well and um, as a company, um, you understand you know, you know Tony Hayward. Um, is, and as a Brit, handling this uh, crisis in the US with the US media, um, he's obviously had um, a really rough ride over the last few weeks. Is there any advice that you would offer to him in this situation? Well, no matter what you say in a situation like this, somebody's going to find something you say and jump on it and say, ah, you heartless, cruel financier or capitalist, you know, you have no sympathy for anyone, no matter what you say. So the only thing I can suggest is be careful and say as little as possible because, look, it's, these are fraught and emotional times. It's been going on for 60 days almost now. So and people are getting frayed around the edges. He's getting frayed around the edges. Poor Obama, you know. He's sitting there trying to do something or make it look like he's doing something. So everybody's saying, and they're going to see a lot more things said. So just be less said the better, in my view, and let actions speak louder than words. Do you, do you think the political pressure on BP uh, is reaching the point where it's actually counterproductive in terms of helping BP to best clear up the mess. Well, it's certainly not helping to try it. If some politicians are trying to cripple BP, that's not going to help. You know, politicians are not going to stop the, the leak under any circumstances. They can sit there and shriek and yell all day long. But politicians are not going to stop the leak, and politicians are not going to put more petrol in your gas tank or more gasoline in your gas, in your gas tank. But they will shout and scream because they want to be seen as being doing something, as being part of the solution. It just makes things worse. It doesn't make things better. What are the chances do you think that BP will end up crippled by the end of this process? Well, I, I know they're being crippled because it's costing a huge amount of money. It's gigantic amounts of money. That's crippling. There's no question about it. Is it the end of BP? I doubt it. I mean, somewhere along the line, I expect that I will buy BP, but I'm not buying it now. I'm just watching to see what happens. In my experience, whenever you have disasters like this, there comes a time when it's, it's time to buy uh, whatever, the, whatever the company is and whatever the situation is. But in my view, I don't look at it as a, as a question of what price. I look at it as a question of time because time has to pass and it will take a while for BP to come back in the marketplace. So I'm just watching. Um, in terms of the, um, the politics, does what's happened in the Gulf of Mexico um, increase or reduce the likelihood of the uh, uh, Congress passing the energy bill this year? <laughs> it increases the likelihood they'll pass something. Does it increase the likelihood they'll pass something that's good for America and good for the world? No, it decreases it because now there's all this emotional emotion involved and all this bashing of oil companies and energy companies. So whatever they come up with, I'm sure it's going to be worse, not better. Um, um, so, I mean, are you satisfied with the amount of uh, support they're giving to this legislative process at this stage? Well, no, I'm, I'm not at all. I'm copying anybody. They're bashing the, the energy uh, industry. Uh, America's got a terrible shortage of energy. America's got a terrible energy problem and has had for four decades. And no Amer American, few American politicians in that period of time have understood the situation or have come up with anything to solve the problem. And this crowd's not doing any better. In fact, now that this crowd is so emotional, they're making it worse. They're not making it better. What Obama should be doing, if, if he's worried about the future of America, he should be going and say, look, we're going to have to drill more offshore. We're going to have to open up all of these areas which we've not been drilling before. Is he going to do that? No, he doesn't have the, the integrity. He doesn't have the courage. You know, most politicians are worried about the next election. They're not worried about your children and mine. But what Obama should be doing now is trying to explain to people, look, we're going to have to do more of this, not less. Is he going to say that? Oh, not, not, not in a million years. The situation in Europe. I mean, in Spain this morning, we had the newspapers reporting that the IMF and the um, EU are preparing a um, bailout for, uh, for Spain. Um, 250 billion that has been denied, but there's been increasing noise in the press um, that um, something of this nature is coming. 
What, how do you see the scenario? How do you see it, do you see it playing out for Europe? Well, I'm sure they're going to do something if, if they feel it's necessary. Politicians don't know any better. It's that, that's, how they, that's how they react. They're worried about the next election. I don't think it's good for Spain. I don't think it's good for Europe. I don't think it's good for the world to bail out people who have failed. Uh, but politicians don't think that way. You know, when, when the banks get on the phone and say, help us, help us, help us, uh, it's going to bring down Western civilization as we know him. Poor politician, he doesn't know any better. He can't read a balance sheet. He doesn't understand. He says, oh my gosh, Western civilization is in peril. So he will, he will write checks and save people. That's not the way it's supposed to work. But that, unfortunately, is the way it normally does work, at least in countries we're talking about. And, and how do you see the end game for Europe? In the end game for Europe, in the end, it's going to be more and more debasement of the euro, of the currency, more corrosion from within, and eventually the euro, the euro disappears, uh, you know, 10, 15 years from now. I don't like saying that. I happen to own the euro uh, as we speak, and in fact, I bought some earlier this week, but, uh, and the world needs the euro or something like it. The world desperately needs something to compete with the U.S. dollar, which is a terribly flawed currency, unfortunately, Debasing what has been a strong currency and making it weaker and weaker is, in the end, going to destroy the euro. And how, so how do you trade it in the, in the, in the interim? Well, in the interim, I'm wrong with the euro. It got beaten down so much that, uh, you know, everybody was pessimistic on the euro, including me, you know, saying it's not going to be around in a few years. But whenever that happens, in my experience, it's time to go in and take the other side. So I bought some euros and, and we might even buy some more, but um, how long will I own them? I don't know. Maybe one day, maybe one month, maybe one year. I don't know. We'll have to see how things evolve. Great. Listen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.